Okay. All right. <clears throat> Commissioner's Court will meet in workshop session uh, December 9th, 10 a.m. Commissioner's Courtroom, uh, County Administration Building, 2 or South Texas Avenue, Suite 106. First item is called to order. And the second is a presentation discussion by Trailer Associates regarding American Rescue Plan Act funding. Kimberly Roach. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners, Visitors. My name is Kimberly Roach. I work on behalf of the court in the uh, organization and administration of the ARPA funding. Uh, we actually contracted out with an outside agency, Trailer and Associates, because of the the large sum of this funding and we have them here today to present. We have two of the three team members that are working. We have Mr. Mark Taylor and Wesley Trailer. Yes, got it. And uh, they'll be presenting today and opening for discussion for the court. So. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Morning. We appreciate this opportunity. Uh, we'd kind of like to start this presentation off with uh, a short review of the ARPA program and kind of where we're at, what's going on, the money that's available, and then kind of get down in the weeds on some things pertaining to ARPA, and then at that point in time go into discussions as far as kind of what y'all would like to see done with this money and where you'd like to see us, see us go with this. So uh, as far as advancing it, do we have the controls here? Um, All right. Y'all bear with me. Let me see if I got this down. It may not be on. On the but, side, there's an on and off button first. Oh. Okay. There you go. All right. All right. And we'll see what we got here. There we go. Okay. All right. So once again, just to recap, the allocation, $44,521,550. The county has received 50% of those funds at this point in time. The remaining 50% will be received in the fall of 2022. The first tranche of these funds do not have to be fully ex expended in order to receive that second allocation. That will automatically be coming to y'all in the fall of next year. All right, kind of timelines that we need to keep in mind. Remember, uh, March the 3rd, 2021, that is the first day that expenses were allowed in conjunction with these funds. We cannot go back prior to that date as far as the expenditure of these funds. December 31st, 2024, that's when all of the funds must be allocated. December 31st, 2026 is when all of the funds must be expended. So those are kind of three important dates we need to keep in mind as, as we go forward with today's workshop. <clears throat> uh, as far as expenditure categories, pretty much anything you're going to look at with these ARPA funds is going to fall within one of these three broad categories. And these are very broad categories. Uh, it's revenue loss, public health and economic impacts, and infrastructure, which included in infrastructure, broadband, water, sewer, and stormwater drainage. Once again, these are very broad categories. There's a lot that can fit into each of these categories. Uh, first thing I'd like to talk with you about is revenue loss, kind of go a little bit deeper into how revenue loss is determined, and then revenue loss as it pertains specifically to Brazos County. Uh, you look at the base year revenue, which is uh, your fiscal year end, 9-30-2019. Uh, you multiply that by one plus the growth adjustment to the power of n over 12. And that, that's a lot there. I have to break out the scientific calculator on that. That gives you the adjusted gross revenue and determines if you do have a revenue loss for that time period. Now the time period that's looked at with these ARPA funds is very specific. It's December the 31st, 2020, 2021. 2022 and 2023. Those four specific dates and days are what we have to look at in determining revenue loss. We realize that does not coincide with the county's fiscal year. There again, that's why we're looking at the power of N over 12. Um, once again, base revenue that's looked at for each year. The growth adjustment for Brazos County is 7.4%. And once again, N is the number of months since the base revenue was determined that we're looking at for, 
for each year. So that's going to change on a yearly basis. Uh, briefly, uh, to talk about, do I need to be in front of this speaker, or can y'all hear me okay if I kind of walk? I'm, I'm kind of a walker and talker. <laughs> Okay. Um, the interim final rule as it speaks to the, the ARPA funds, revenue loss, what these funds can be used for. Here's a brief definition of it. I'm not going to read this to each of you individually, but basically what you're looking at is any funds you're claiming as revenue loss. One, you know for sure you can use these funds for anything that it specifies in the interim final rule that funds can be used for. In addition to that, once these funds go back into your general account, they can be used basically for anything to meet the needs of the citizens of Brazos County. There are some exceptions that these funds cannot be used for. But once again, keep in mind, the funds can be utilized to meet the needs of the citizens. Uh, Things that they cannot be used for that it specifically states is paying interest or principal on outstanding debt, replenishing rainy day or reserve funds, or paying settlements or judgments. Once again, when you go back to the interim final rule, those are the only specific things they cannot be used for. And there again, that goes back to the fact that those particular expenses do not directly benefit the citizens. And folks, I, I apologize if I go through this kind of quickly sometimes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them at, at any time. Yeah, on slide number six, there's a term called pay-go in there. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Pay-go means you are performing, uh, usually it's in reference to infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is you're doing a project with those funds, you're paying for it at that time. Okay. You are not financing that project and paying a portion of that with these funds. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are we looking at for revenue loss for Brazos County? Uh, first of all, at this point in time, once again, we are looking at December the 31st of each year. The only one we can give you with any accuracy at this point in time is 2020. The other three years have been projected by your auditor's office. It has been put into this formula. Um, there again, 2020, $6,419,821. 2021, $7,450,025. 2022, $9,175,423. 2023, $9,854,405. For a total of $32,899,674. Once again, uh, 2020, we are relatively comfortable with. The others, I think you're going to see those are falling pretty close. But once again, those are best guess projections at this point in time. Any questions on the revenue loss component of it? How it's looked at, how it's determined, what those funds are eligible to be used for? All right, All right. Um, once again, we just plug these in. The revenue loss does not have to go back into general fund. Uh, that's something that most entities, if it is eligible, they want to do that. It gives them a little more flexibility in the use of these funds. If we ran these numbers, if we put the maximum projected at this point in time into that, uh, the only other expenditures that we have at this point in time is the vaccination hubs that the county participated in. If you, if you run those numbers, what you're looking at at this point in time is roughly $11.5 million that would need to be programmed independent of the general revenue fund. Uh, out of that, of course, you've got some administration expenses that will be coming as well, so you're going to be looking at, at a little less than that that would, would actually be available for programming. So with, with that being said, at this point in time, we would kind of like to get into some of the specific projects 
that has been expressed to us that there is a potential interest in and uh, get the pleasure of the judge and the commissioners as far as <coughs> these funds, what you would like to see done with some of these funds. Uh, I'd like to bring Wesley Trailer up with me as we go through the remainder of this slide. And once again, um, commissioners, judge, this, this we need y'all's interaction, we need y'all's input at this point in time to, to kind of move forward with this project. Um, first thing we have on here is, is broadband. Uh, Wesley, would you like to come into play? <clears throat> Um, once again, broadband is one of the specific activities that's referenced in the ARPA funds that's eligible to be used with these funds. We're kind of look, looking at this basic format on each one of these activities. Once again, this is not an all-inclusive list. If there, if there are other activities the county would like to see considered, we definitely want that information as, as we go forward with this. But what we kind of like to talk about is the possible participants, other possible fundings for each of these activities, uh, project cost, projected project cost, and then the timeline of implementing these particular activities. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and thank you, Mark. And again, my name is Wesley uh, Trailer. If you all have any questions about uh, broadband, how to go about getting broadband furnished to Brazos County, um, there's a number of ways to approach that. There's also, uh, as you see here, we've, we've kind of left this as a blank slate. Uh, would, would love and, and, and really need your feedback here on broadband. Uh, we've got uh, some blanks up there, right? So we've got other possible funding, projected cost, and timeline. Um, you know, right now, uh, the state of Texas, counties in Texas, cities in Texas have never seen uh, so many different funding avenues for broadband. Um, your coronavirus uh, local fiscal recovery funds are certainly one avenue for broadband, um, you know, and, and getting more of that into Brazos County. But one thing that I do want to make sure that, that we go over is, is the fact that not, not all of, of broadband that needs to be tackled in, in Brazos County, not all of that necessarily needs to come out of your coronavirus uh, local fiscal recovery funds. Again, that's, that's y'all decision, but I do want to make, uh, make sure that everyone is aware that um, there are other funding avenues for uh, broadband that we're learning about every single day. Uh, we do know that the uh, comptroller has got some money right now uh, for things like uh, something as simple as, as replacing uh, poles and getting infrastructure on poles uh, at about a 50% cost share. Uh, so kind of banking off of existing infrastructure and getting new infrastructure in uh, from, from that case in point. <clears throat> any any questions or ideas before we, we go a little bit further down this road on, on broadband or things you want us to be looking at or considering uh, for Brazos County? One of the things uh, you mentioned was CARES Act could be a part of this, and I just don't know if we have any CARES Act funds still uh, available. My assumption is that we spent everything mm -hmm. uh, on doing what we needed to do. I think that's correct. Okay. Okay. And then I guess we're all still wondering what the infrastructure bill allocation, how it's going to be allocated, uh, where to go for the money, all those types of things. And that's, that's what we're looking at as well. Uh, we do know that there's going to be uh, a tremendous amount uh, of money allocated to broadband in that infrastructure bill. Uh, what we're trying to figure out, though, is uh, how, how is a Brazos County going to get that money? Is it going to be an allocation or are we going to have to compete for that money against other entities uh, in Texas? Sometimes you just never know who's going to get the allocation and who has to compete for it, but uh, we've got eyes and ears open uh, as it relates to that. If you'll look uh, over here on the screen, you'll see a broadband coverage map for Brazos County, and I think this might help us uh, in determining, hey, what's right for the citizens of, of Brazos County and, and figuring out how much to try and allocate towards broadband. Uh, the green uh, part of that map uh, on, on the inside of Brazos County are areas that are, that are covered quite well with, with broadband. If you look to the, um, the light pink or uh, in red shaded areas, that's where it's a little bit harder uh, for folks in Brazos County to, to get broadband right now. Um, those are some areas of opportunity that we've identified um, through a number of different open source data uh, to try and figure out, hey, if we do go this route of trying to get broadband in Brazos County, where do we want to try and, and look at kind of attacking this and, and lending our helping hand? So 
that's broadband. But bef before I move on uh, to, to another topic, I just want to make sure that we've addressed any questions or, or concerns um, or just general commentary that the, that the court has on, on just the topic of broadband at this point in time. On the, on the broadband, the data you're showing there, that's the standard that is two down, 20, no, I'm sorry, two down, 25 up? So it is uh, 25 down, three up. 25 down, three up, okay. Correct. Do we have any cost uh, estimates at all to cover these areas of the county that don't currently have <clears throat> adequate coverage? I mean, have we seen anything? Yeah, so I personally have not seen any cost estimates yet um, to see that. I think it would be appropriate um, to go down that avenue if directed uh, by the commissioner's court. If we want to try and start sizing that up or, or start soliciting different folks, uh, I think one way to really figure it out is to uh, put out a solicitation to different providers of that type of service and say, hey, what, is it, what does it look like? That way we can receive bids and, uh, and start seeing a number of bids from folks to kind of see what, you know, what is the average between some of those bids. And uh, you may, may not even necessarily award something out of that, but to try and get a very good idea of what the market looks like right now. I think we've all seen across a couple of different industries uh, a large swing in, in pricing. Sure. Uh, so I would be very interested in, uh, I, I would definitely advise soliciting a number of folks uh, for trying to figure out what that might look like. But, uh, but I do apologize, I don't have a, uh, an estimate for what it would look like to, to really kind of finish that gap or complete that well, gap in service. I also believe that we don't want to, be, as a county, we don't want to be in the service business. In other words, we don't, we don't want people paying us for their coverage. We want to supply infrastructure or the highway, uh, if you will, where private entities could, uh, could serve our citizens. Correct. Correct. I mean, that's that's off that's offering a new service that you haven't uh, in the past, and a service that is very competitive right now in the private marketplace. Um, you know, between you, me, and the fence, you know, I kind of just feel like that's that's something. If I was an expert in it, I wouldn't try to jump into the game at this point. Uh, with when other folks have got a forty-five year head start on it uh, at, at trying to provide that and compete against that and add that to. Um, kind of your arsenal of things to keep up with. Can, I don't we, guess, get, can we get, I'm sorry. I don't guess we've got any idea how other counties might be looking at uh, uh, whether it's use of this funds or even in the state funds that might be available in the future, how they're looking at how they may be able to get broadband out in their counties. I mean, you know, I don't want us to reinvent the wheel or anything they ought to be hopefully there's somebody that's also been thinking about it whether in the state maybe since they're providing some funding maybe they've got some ideas about how we might be able to reach all those areas that that really don't have the service you know uh, I mean it, that map makes it look like there's a lot of pretty good service in Brazos County but I know that there's a lot of folks out there that don't have the service and so those are really who we'd like to reach. And I don't have the best way to do it and have the best way to spend money to try to get it done. We don't want to uh, pick winners and looters out in the private sector, but we still, uh, however we can get that accomplished best, I think. I mean, I, I think that's, I think it's an honor, honorable goal to try Absolutely. to get uh, those citizens out there that don't have the service to be able to get to them. And Judge, that's, that's great feedback and a, and a great question. Uh, what we're seeing in other counties right now regarding setting up some of that uh, infrastructure for broadband, um, and you said don't reinvent the wheel, um, that they're looking at it as a wheel approach. So they're calling it a hub and spoke approach uh, where they're at. And what they're doing is say a, a, a county's got, uh, let's just say to keep things simple, four uh, precinct offices that are spread out kind of evenly throughout the county. What they're asking of these providers is to go in and set up that framework uh, be between kind of a centralized area of the county out to one of those precinct offices so that you've got the area covered between kind of a centralized area going out to kind of more, more of a perimeter location. You're helping or subsidizing the private industry in doing that if you're offering some of your funds for that or helping them and going after other federal funds. At that point in time, that, that's a great blessing to them that they've got that put into place and now the, the last mile service provider so to speak can come in off of that hub and spoke design 
that's already right there. That's the hardest part for all those folks in most of these deals. And that's what we're hearing. That's what we're seeing uh, being formulated in other counties and other cities that we work with right now. So um, if, that's, if that's clear, uh, let me know on that. But if I need to explain any of that a little bit more, um, I'm also I happy to go a little bit further. The, dog, the surrounding counties, which were rural counties, that there was some Fed money available. And I believe that they currently have better broadband, better internet service than Brazos County because we're in an urban county. There wasn't money available for us. But my, I guess my question also, Wesley, is can we use some of the, uh, the infrastructure that the COGS already put in place in these surrounding counties to help serve the outlying areas of Brazos County? You know, in other words, can we work in conjunction with them? Yeah, I think so, and I think that's a, a good utilization of, of existing assets and sharing, and you can set up MOUs to try and make sure that that's done. Um, it's just a matter of, of, of coming together and setting up user agreements, finding out where those gaps are in, in service, but that's certainly something we're, we're willing and able to, to help with. Um, yeah. It's just a, a matter of I, how I do you want to approach got it. A blueprint, a blueprint or a plan in place of how to do it and how to work with private entities. I, I, Judge, you know more about that right. than I would, of course. But. And uh, I think Mark wants to go over a little bit of, of RDOF funding and, and kind of talk to sure. some of the funding that might be available per block group here in Brazos County, too. Yeah. And that's part of the federal funding that I think you're mentioning with the COG. Thanks. Uh, we're going to kind of be tag teaming through the remainder of this presentation, so, folks. So any, any questions you have, just throw out there, and, and hopefully one of us can get you the answer you need. Going back to this map, I would like to provide a little more clarification on it. Uh, once again, the green areas are in the, gray, in the areas that have at least 25 down, 3 up. What we're looking at population-wise based on the information we've been able to obtain, is a little less than 4% of the population of Brazos County does not have that minimal Wi-Fi service. Uh, once again, that is the lighter red colors. Once again, there's some overlap with these colors as well. What those red colors or pink colors or however you want to look at that, what those represent, those are federal funds that are available based by block coming down to Brazos County that's directly available to providers as subsidies to provide either increased or new service to those areas. So that is, that is one form of funding outside of what the county would have to do that's available to those providers at this point in time. Those funds are currently available. Now, whether they have been accessed by any of the providers or not, that we do not know the answer to. And we would be more than happy to try to obtain that information for you if, if you would like. Once again, this is broken down to the block level, level which is pretty minute. Uh, some of these blocks they have identified as having uh, only two locations that would benefit from this service. Therefore, the subsidy for that particular block, block is going to be minimal. There's other blocks they have identified that are pretty good size that they have... Uh, over $300,000 available to provide Wi-Fi to that particular block. So there are some additional funds out there. We do not know if they have been accessed. If so, to what degree? It is not mandatory that the providers access these funds. What we're seeing in some situations is they're kind of picking and choosing, saying even though there's subsidies out there, it's still not enough for us to get service to this rural area and to offset our cost to get it there. That's the information I think we need to try to get and see where are they utilizing these funds, what holes are left at that point in time. Yeah, I, I would appreciate uh, that. About. I think it's important that we find that out. The definition, the definition of broadband, okay, 25, there's a lot of data out there that says 25.3 is still inadequate for the type of usages uh, that, that people are looking at and that really the standard in looking at things we ought to be looking at is, is 110, 100 up, uh, 100 down and 10 up. Right. That's where you get to where uh, you can do a lot more things and capabilities and uh, you know broadband is going to get broader as we go forward. So is there a way that we can get uh, the same type of data on 50 and 5 or 110? 
Yes, sir. Look at where those we'll, are as far as yeah. that goes. We'll be because more I than think, happy to get yeah. that information. I think as a standard, we need to be looking at at least 50 and 5, if not 110. Okay. And my, my preference would be 110 because I know inside uh, the incorporated areas of Brazos County, 110 is, is very uh, affordably available. Right. And it's going to get even more affordable right. uh, with what's going on. So I'd like to see kind of that and see where we look. I, my, my thought would be is, is we're going to look a lot different than that map right there. Yeah, and we will definitely get that information and, and present it back to commissioners. And, and, and I'm yeah. sure that uh, if you talk to the folks over at COG with what they've done with BB Cognet, uh, I'm sure they've got data as far as some of that goes too. I don't. Uh, it used to be Michael, but now Michael Parks. But now, uh, have y'all talked to anybody over at uh, the COG? No, sir, we have not. There again, the, the intent behind this workshop sure. is to receive feedback from y'all. Y'all yeah. direct us on where you want us to go at this point in time, and then we're, we'll move forward and, and report back to you once yeah. at that point in time. We, yeah, we don't want to chase rabbits I, if you don't want us going there. I agree with the other comments that have been made to the extent that we can partner with uh, the COG on BB Cognet on building uh, off of their fiber optic loop uh, to where we can find areas where we might want to enhance the quality of broadband that's already in existence out there uh, for uh, people in, uh, you know, densely enough populated areas uh, to where it makes right. sense. And then the private provider can come in and say, hey, if you get me this far, I can get that last mile or I can right. get to the home uh, type of stuff. So thank you. At, at least my highest priority, and I don't think anybody on the court would disagree, is school, school children being able to access to, to do their work. If Were we ever to have to not have school again mm -hmm. where they could continue to work? And I wonder if the school districts don't have an interest in that, uh, that also. Oh, I'm sure they definitely do. Uh, <clears throat> and once again, kind of what, what we're seeing throughout with entities we are assisting is pretty much exactly uniform with what you're saying. We realize that, that Wi-Fi is the wave of the future. We realize we need to get it to all of our citizens. Uh, same time, we don't necessarily want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to get in the broadband business ourselves. We've got enough to take care of without nice. going there. So what do we need to do to get to that point, to ensure that we are providing broadband as best we can throughout the county without getting in the broadband business? I think that says it all. Mm -hmm. you, you talked about a time. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Did I interrupt no, you? no. You talked about a timeline er, earlier, and I'm certainly not speaking on behalf of the court, but I would love to have at least a starting place on this project within six months. And and I definitely think that's doable. Uh, on this particular thing, we kind of we kind of have our general charge at this point in time. I think. Uh, one thing we need to take a look and see is, is what actually, let's, let's forget the 25-3 at this point in time, let's look at, at, at stronger service, see how that affects our map. Yeah. Get with the current providers, see what they are doing for accessing, say, these ARDOF funds. Uh, the other funds I think Wesley briefly mentioned to y'all is the, the poll lines, that's, uh, is it House Bill 1505? 1505. Yeah, House Bill 1505 is going to be stood up the first part of next year. I think by March that's going to be up, March 22nd, somewhere along in there. What that will do is provide uh, funding to these providers for any poll replacements that's needed in conjunction with providing broadband service. Uh, it will provide, Wesley, help me if I'm wrong, 50% of the poll up to a cost of $5,500 per poll. That's correct. So that in and of itself would be a good, a good start for some of these entities. Wesley, another thought would be that we could use county facilities, and I'm only speaking specifically of two, but we've got a rather significant yard out in, uh, for our road and bridge in Precinct 2. Were, were this system to be wireless, I could see no reason that we couldn't use county facilities uh, for towers. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Anything to, to offset... Um, a, a lot of broadband cost uh, is, is in the form of lease cost. If you already got those assets and we don't have to factor in a cost for that other than just the, the installation cost and ongoing maintenance, 
that's great if we can kind of take off that that you know continual lease cost. So that's that's a very good idea. Uh, once again, we're not trying to rush by any means. Uh, at this point in time, once again, the direction that we're receiving from y'all is to pursue this. Uh, Yes. Get with the current providers, see what their intentions are providing additional service, uh, see how they're going to access these ARDOF funds and, and other funds that we're aware, uh, aware of, and then get back with Commissioner's Court, provide you with that information to move forward with this as, as one of the potential uses of these funds. Uh, once again, just for clarification purposes, I know we talked about the lost revenue. Uh, this is a prime example. ARDOF funds can be used, if you will, directly allocated to broadband service, or if you want to say, let's put these funds back in our general revenue, then pay it out of that, that is an option as well. But, but broadband is definitely, definitely an eligible expenditure of these funds. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back then and help me figure out context. And, and, and y'all just verified. The way I look at this is, is if we go to slide number, I guess, uh, eight, the lost revenue, I realize that 21, 22, and 23 are at this time estimates, but uh, close approximations of what we anticipate things will be. Um, the way I look at it is, is there's ARPA money that has to stay above that line, and if you go over to five, uh, what we're estimating this, if you go over to slide 11, we're estimating that money, the, this says balance of the program, that's the money that will be still under the Treasury's guidelines for appropriate uses to qualify in its use. So we would have uh, about 11 and a half million that is still ARPA funds uh, subject to the restrictions, uh, we could leave money out of that 32 million, or about 33 million, we could leave that in that category, or if we took it down to the general fund, we lose all restrictions that are the same. So I kind of look at it as, as uh, you know, we've got about 11 and a half million that's ARPA restricted, and about 33 million that's general fund should we so desire to do that where we have lost all of the ARPA restrictions or are, is it some of the uh, Treasury's restrictions on appropriate use? Uh, once again kind of backing up to I apologize uh, slide, slide, seven. slide seven yes those restrictions would still be tied to those funds to the general fund. To the general fund, yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Would you mind getting me a larger print version of that? Because my eyes sure. are just not quite good enough sure. to read we'd it be, off of the. Be, we'd be more than happy to. Thank you. And and maybe elaborate on that because uh, the words are always, uh, you know, what does that really mean? The, the, yes, the reason I asked the pay go question. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and there again. Uh, we will further define the pay go as a matter of fact in the sure. and I keep once again when we first came before y'all we talked to y'all about the interim final rule yes. which is kind of an oxymoron it's still the <laughs> interim final rule we, we do not have a final rule out there yet but within the interim final rule they do provide a definition of pay as you okay. go and we will we will be more than happy to provide that to you as well <clears throat> Any other thoughts uh, on either revenue loss or broadband before we kind of can continue through? I think the discussion is um, is uh, productive and that we really need to work with those services that are already out there. I think the, the COG has a, a great amount of work that we could benefit from and then enhance uh, in some way with, you know, that that we can provide. I'd like to see more happen with our books. Uh, I want to stretch it as much as we can. 
for the services of our community. Very good. And, and once again, this is a finite amount of funding y'all have, mm -hmm. and you need to, if you will, get the best bang for your buck exactly. and provide the service that's needed uh, to, to your citizens with, without duplicating, necessarily right. duplicating services. Right. Wherever we could work together makes and, sense. And Commissioner Aldrich, I'd, I'd just like to back up just a little bit as, as far as your understanding of the revenue loss. That's spot on. Okay. That's exactly correct. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I think our challenge is going to be more of how we allocate that about eleven and a half million dollars than it is the uh, approximately thirty-three million dollars. Yes, sir. Uh, that's that's a, a different, but making sure we get all of that used appropriately, I think, is going to be a bigger challenge than the other. Yes, Can you sir. think of any good reasons and have other counties, from what you've seen so far, not when it's appropriate and they've got an exact number who have decided to leave those revenue, lost revenue or municipalities to leave the lost revenue numbers under the interim guidelines or has everybody just pretty much said, hey, we're taking that down into the general fund? No, if, if they have the ability and they do have lost revenue, they're wanting to utilize that and place it within their general. I would think that, <coughs> would be true, but I was just curious if there was something. Yeah, yeah. Once again, that's pretty much what we're seeing throughout. Uh, now there are some that don't, of course, are not experiencing the lost revenue. Uh, all of that comes into play. The growth factor is a key component on that as well, and that that's what gets you into the lost revenue. Is is the the growth that Brazos County incurred prior to COVID? Once again, that's above, um, without, without going too deep into it, ARPA says you can use a standard growth factor of 4.1%, or you can use an average of your growth factor the three years prior to COVID, okay. whichever is greater. Okay, and that's why we're at the 7.4. That's why right. you're at the 7.4, because okay. it's been calculated that y'all's growth for those three years averaged was 7.4%. Here's the growth. <laughs> and catching up with it, what it requires. Yes. Right. And once again, as, as and I know I'm repeating myself on some things, but for 2020, those numbers are pretty accurate. 21, 22, 23, I don't think you're going to see them off much, uh, but they are as accurate as we can get at this point in time with our projections. Of course, 2021, probably February, early March of next year, we'll, we'll know accurate numbers on, on that as well. Once again, those numbers have to be determined as of December the 31st of, of whatever year you're calculating for. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. All right, we have uh, we've gone through broadband, uh, another important uh, topic that, that we get to discuss and, and talk about all across the state uh, is mental health, uh, a lot of different services or facilities um, to enhance the community's posture as it relates to providing mental health services. That's what everyone's talking about across the state. A lot of people are uh, anyways. Uh, again, we, we don't know um, all that exists uh, in, in Brazos County at this point in time. We, we, we know a little bit, but we don't want to say that we're the experts just yet on that, um, but we're certainly uh, open to hearing a little bit more about y'all's um, experience and y'all's opinions uh, on, on mental health capacities uh, inside of Brazos County. And we wanted to put that up there um, just based on experience with, with other counties and other cities in the state of Texas at this point in time. So we've, we've put that up here for, for mental health. There's a lot of different ways to, to look at it, of course. Uh, and, and I compare it to, to our broadband discussion as well in terms of do we want to get in that business or do we want to uh, try and, and lean on existing providers or folks that may have a little bit quicker ramp up if we do decide that this is a priority for the county? So um, just a, a point for consideration and, and discussion here with the county. Well, um, the county has agreements with a number of nonprofits mm -hmm. that uh, we help fund on an annual basis, and many of them 
uh, directly uh, provide mental health uh, services. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinking of uh, NAMI and, and MHMR, but also uh, the Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, uh, the uh, Scotty's House, the uh, Sexual Resource uh, Center, mm -hmm. uh, Prenatal Clinic. They all deal with uh, people that are particularly stressed and uh, have mental health issues. And uh, I would think that if we were to address the mental health uh, funding that we would continue to look at our partners that are already providing these services in the, in the county and that we have relationships with. Do you have any idea, ideas about what other counties are doing, how they are using that money? Yeah, other, other counties that I'm working with uh, have a lot of the, the same <coughs> Uh, relationships, uh, Commissioner Barry, that you were just speaking to as well uh, mm -hmm. across Texas, and what they are doing is they are um, right now. They're some of them have already made um, direct contributions and allocations towards those uh, programs uh, or organizations. Uh, some of them are still trying to figure out how much they they want to contribute. A lot of them contribute within their their annual budget, um, regardless of an influx of. of, of oh. Uh, local fiscal recovery funds, right? So maybe each year it's ten thousand to you know uh, ten thousand dollars to to twenty different organizations, and that's what they've done always. But uh, maybe now for the next three years, they're increasing that for for each organization. That's that's what we're seeing a lot of right now. Um, you know, they've put in a formal um, request system uh, at their counties and, uh, with a format, uh, and all these different organizations fill out the form, submit it to the counties and say, hey, these are the dollars that we're looking for and this is what we're going to do with the dollars. This is our timeline and this is what we think is going to be the outcome of, of spending these dollars uh, in this particular program. That's that's what we're seeing right now. I think that I think it's a, a good way to do it too because um, you get to hear with that request of money, uh, people start telling their story. They, mm -hmm. they start telling you a little bit more about what they're seeing out there in the real world, in the community, uh, maybe something that, that, you know, it's uh, something you haven't maybe thought to ask or you haven't, you haven't looked for, but then you get to find it out, um, something that's going on in the community because people are uh, looking for a funding solution to a problem that they're seeing, and now you're getting to learn about it. So I think that's been a pretty good uh, eye-opener uh, for some of the other counties that we work in. <laughs> My only concern about that would be is, is that we make sure that the entities that we are funding realize that this is not a ongoing revenue stream right. that we are creating Correct. for them, that it is a time-limited amount of money to where their anticipation is. It would, clearly, we don't give them the anticipation that uh, beyond the period of time that we have the ability to allocate these funds that we're going to continue to allocate comparable amounts of money. Yeah. I think the biggest concern over all of this for me is, is uh, making sure since this is over a brief time period of time, one time money, that we make sure that we uh, have, that we don't create an ongoing need for funding with whatever we use this money to create unless we have in our pro forma of that entity mental health uh, whatever it's going to be, uh, medical examiner's office or office, like we're, uh, it was one of our topics that we have a plan once these funds are no longer available to okay. it, for it to stand on its own yeah. with its own uh, revenue neutral or a finite amount of participation subsidy that we know that we can handle from an ongoing general fund allocation for the county's part in it. The other thing I'd like to say, too, is this, uh, my hope would be, and I don't know if it's possible, but I'd really like to see, because, I mean, the city of Bryan and the city of College Station got almost uh, comparably the same amount of money uh, that uh, the county did. Uh, if you combine the two, it's probably more than the county uh -huh. got. Uh, so, uh, but, I mean, to the extent that we can coordinate some of these efforts uh -huh. between the two cities uh, and for programming for the future to the extent that we could bring in the university and the university system yes. looking at what some of their ideas would be where in we've blue. got the yes. ability to have these funds available to get us over a hump mm -hmm. to where 
three years from now, at the end of the expenditures, I get for four years from now, the end of the expenditures of what we have here, uh, that we can have a plan for those additional things. We can help build it, but then have it stand on its own type of things. But I really, I think that uh, to the extent that we can collaborate not only with the COG, but with the City of Bryan, City College Station, uh, Texas a and University would be uh, to all of the community's benefit. Yeah, and yeah. Blinn. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no question. Yes. Uh, I, I yes. think the yes. cooperation and collaboration is definitely the way we want to go on and, this, and, and we don't and, want to be funding right. any full-time positions that are going to be an ongoing expense. Yes. And both of the, well, all three of the ISDs, Navasota mm -hmm. ISD has a uh, large uh, area in Brazos County. Yeah. Doesn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, students, students from there, but I mean, to the extent that we can uh, collaborate with BISD and CSISD. Yeah, collaboration too, is the way. Absolutely. Uh, acute Very good. mental health care is an issue that I, I really want to be concerned about also. And understand that our sheriff's department—it's their job to uh, to deal with uh, acute mental health care. They and they make about 500 uh, interventions a year, and we currently have to carry those people to an out-of-county facility. And and I would love to know the dollar amount that we spent. Five 500 cases. If it's taking a full day for a sheriff's deputy to deal with each of those, and then the travel cost on top of that. That's a significant amount of money that we're already spending. Commissioner, it's it two, it's two deputies. They don't go alone. Oh, so right. it's two. two, uh, two even better, yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes it's four because it's two taking someone and two bringing someone else back at, right. the, at similar times. So it is we're, a we're major We're spending expense. a significant amount of money right now, right. no question No about question. That. Uh, at, at point of clarification, as far as treatment facilities and inpatient care, it's my understanding that previously there was a facility here. Currently, there is not a facility for correct. inpatient care of, of mental health patients. Correct. Is that correct? There were two. Then there were none. Then there was one. Now there are none again. Okay. All right. Uh, once again, just for clarification from the court, is that something y'all would like us to, to pursue further and get additional information mm -hmm. on as I'm, far as an inpatient facility? I'm, yeah. I'm interested in that. Yeah. Uh, there is a the great need. Is need. Here. Yes. Yeah, and and the, the university, I've been had some discussions with them. They're, they're interested in looking too. I mean, they may participate not at the, at the facility so, level, but mm -hmm. I mean, they've Got a psychology department out there that's interested. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had we've sat down and had some discussions with them about it. I think they would be interested in participating. Uh, and once somebody's incarcerated, then it is a sheriff's responsibility to deliver and bring back. But it's both cities may pick up somebody who's having a mental crisis, and then they have to deal with them. Uh, and if they don't get incarcerated, then it's the cities that are dealing with. It. So the cities also have yeah, some of that. Should and I think they do. I mean, I think that's a discussion that we should have with both cities, and and, and we've had some preliminary discussions with it. Yes. So, uh, I, you know, I, I there's no question there's a need for a some type of facility. Probably is a that short term crisis, uh, three days, seven mm -hmm. days, or something. Not a long term. Mm -hmm. We do right. have promises out there. They deal with. Uh, with uh, uh, alcohol or drug, you know, that sort of rehabilitation. So, and we've got those issues in around Brazos County and I'm happy to have them out there and they deal with that. But, but when you're having a mental crisis, uh, we just don't have any facility close. And if they, they get arrested and are taken to jail, then it's sure's responsibility to take them somewhere else. So. Uh, in addition. So, I, yeah, it is a discussion I think it we need is. to have. Uh, In addition to that, I'm concerned with the CARES, the, the, the uh, providing of care for juveniles. We don't have uh, enough. Um, I understand that there's one psychologist or psychiatrist in the area that will treat juveniles. So that's an issue that we need to look into. I'm not saying that we can solve it, but we do need to address it, I think. And a lot of times when we're talking mental health, 
we're talking about adults, <coughs> but we've got some juveniles that really need to have some care, some treatment, ongoing. Yes. And with regard to that, um, I think uh, the, B, the, uh, the EDC, our Economic Development Corporation, has done some work in exploratory types of things relative to this, and since both cities and the university participate in the EDC, they might be a good uh, venue for us to have them work through that because I do think that uh, uh, having a, uh, you build a mental health ecosystem and a part of that is a inpatient facility but you also have to have all of the clinicians to where you've got adolescent yes. psychology yes. Psych you know, and those types of things and you know what what are the what are the cornerstones that we have to put out there and what opportunity does this uh, you know pr uh, present for us to be able to kick off that uh, mental health mm -hmm. ecosystem uh, of uh, providers because it makes a lot of difference to the citizens in our community and from an economic development perspective, it's also another thing where you can say, hey, we got that, right. we've got the check mark in that box too. I don't exactly. know how far down on the list it is, but it certainly doesn't go as a disadvantage. Right. Uh, so uh, there may be some opportunities to uh, work with the EDC relative to that too. And I kind of look at, you know, I know I may be jumping the gun a little bit, but the medical examiner's office uh, exactly the I think they're the, they're the same model. The only difference is, is that right now we have, uh, you know, we're transporting people either for needs of a medical examiner's, uh, 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 you know, uh, documentation, uh, or we're transporting people who have are in a uh, mental crisis mm -hmm. situation outside of the community, yes. and you know, <clears throat> if my guess would be is, is our surrounding counties are also doing, doing the same the type same. of thing. Yes. If we became the hub of both of these two types of things, both mental health and medical examiner's office, and in collaborations use this money uh, and uh, all got behind the idea of creating a, uh, a, a mental health uh, inpatient facility with all of the things that you have to have to go with that or mm -hmm. what it would take to get that, Yes. and a medical examiner's office both, I think those would be two real, uh, real, real good things for us to create uh, or take a leadership role in trying to create within the community and, yes. and, and ask for participation from all the other entities as well. Right. Well, And, and, and one of the um, local, uh, we're going to go back to the COG, they have done extensive investigation of a medical examiner's office so you might want to visit with them yeah um, Kimberly and, and Leslie went last week to look at the medical examiner's office in Conroe mm -hmm. and they've also been up to the medical examiner's office in Dallas to look and they're talking with people at A&M uh, as a possible location site <coughs> for uh, a medical examiner's office so I think we're well on our way to uh, giving serious thought about whether or not we are going to establish one so well in a medical examiner's office statutorily is the county that's that yeah. is where it it's it's the county that would be the employees of the county and the county would have to be the one that would run it now with here with with the university i mean they're very interested and been involved and and with the health science center and yeah. they're they're very interested in it and certainly they're they're willing to participate with with uh, a potentially two doctors for uh for for the docs that would the actually staff. do the medical exams mm -hmm. uh but uh that's that's kind of the difference between mental health and the medical examiner medical examiner was really a yes. would ultimately be a county uh, department uh, the mental health side of it, uh, my hope would be that somebody else is going to be able to run that. But yeah. I hope we can all get together to yes. help pay for whatever the 
operation cost that's going to ultimately, I mean, we know we might could use funds to build something and get that done, mm -hmm. but long term, there's going to be cost. There's yes. operational cost for both yes. of them, and my hope would be that we can all sit down and decide kind of how it's, it's going to benefit everybody to have both of those close yeah. and how we can all uh, share the cost uh, that it, we all know is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, and you're right, there are a lot of those things, we're, all, we're paying for pieces of those right now. I mean, right. you know, and those costs we may be able to reduce, <coughs> you know, from that uh, perspective, but there's other things that everybody else needs to be looking at to other, other governments. Yeah. Sure. So on, on the mental health side, the, the county can choose to be a, a supporting participant, if you will, whereas the medical examiner's office, you're going to have to take the lead and be yes. the one that stands yeah. that up right. and be ultimately yeah. responsible for their operation. And those are two very key things that we do need to keep in mind as we move forward mm -hmm. and, and looking at both of these. Yeah. Uh, could also come into place on, on the timing of these projects. Once again, I know thinking about it in 2021, 2026 sounds like a long ways off. But when you start looking at some of these programs and, and what's involved in these, uh, it's going to be here before we know it. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I really do, in the discussions we've had on both of these issues, it seems like both cities, the county, and the university have an interest. So we, I don't know exactly how much that is, but everybody's interested right now, which in the past when we've had discussions about those sorts of things, we were all kind of in different areas but right now maybe the stars are going to align and maybe we can get something down that'd be my hope we've got money available to maybe stand something up and my hope would be the operations portion of it we could get together and figure out how we can it make that thing operate the problem yeah. with mental health the facilities we've had in the past has been management mm -hmm. their management no mm -hmm. and um so I think there are facilities in town that could be used. It's just getting the right management in there to uh, run it properly. Because I think the support for the community is there from both cities, the county, uh, both uh, PDs and the sheriff's office and uh, Blinn and the university. I, the support from the community is there. Right. I, I, I think th so too. I think it's just been a, a poor management of the uh, facilities that's uh, been a problem in the past. Well, I think the other thing that has compounded that is is reimbursement from, I mean, yeah. you know, we, okay. we, when we went from two to zero, mm -hmm. that was all based on a change in allocation of revenue from what was available through private payer insurance mm -hmm. or government insurance. and everybody everywhere across the country shut down on that one. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and that's a, you know, that's a unpredictable, it really is. Yeah. Uh, but you have to build in the ability to be able to have sustainability even if that takes place. But that's the main issue on yeah. inpatient, the yeah. inpatient component of all that. Yeah. Right? And I agree with you also is, is uh, we've, you know, had a, had a few swings and misses. Yeah, for sure. Uh, specific to the examiner's office, and since the county would be the, the underlying responsible entity for that, has there been any kind of discussion on project cost, what it would potentially cost to, to get that initiated and, and get that program stood up? Well, the comp did have a study uh, of several years ago that um, outlined the cost and the uh, how we could uh, share the, the expense with other counties that use the services. So there's a basic, I would say a basic plan, which is uh, out there at the COG. Montgomery the County is, Montgomery, Montgomery County is currently building a medical examiner's office. I think it's uh, 22,000 square feet. And I think that it's around twelve million dollars is what the cost of the facility is is looking like. So, yep. uh, <coughs> and then I don't really know what the operation would be. I know that there were <coughs> estimates back when the cog back in twenty fourteen. I think it was twenty thirteen when we speak. Well, that was when we originally started talking. Yeah, twenty fourteen, twenty thirteen. The, the okay. estimates were a good bit low. Yeah. Because once we did a, the county participated in a 
and actually paid for most of the cost of a study. That's right. Uh, that uh, that was done back in, I think that came, I don't remember what year it was, maybe 2015, 2016. And it turned out, I think that it's, yeah, it was like six or eight million dollars is what the cost of a facility was going to cost. And then, I don't remember, like a million, two million, three annual cost. And so, uh, and at that time, there wasn't as much uh, <coughs> interest in, I think, the others participating as much. We weren't mm -hmm. sure. So the county kind of stepped back and said, you know, that's a big chunk to step off into and, right. and we just decided not to do it. But, uh, it, you know, we're look, now with there's money there and I can tell you we had a COG meeting yesterday and this discussion came up. Everybody there is interested. Of course, they all know that Brazos County will be the one that will have to take the lead on it. So, <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, at least the initial funding would be Brazos County if we move forward. So they're all on board. Everybody there was on it's board with that. Well, of course. We're, right. Well, you we're, know, we're, the, the thing three people can agree on, is, uh, two people can agree on is what the third should spend for money. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the way it was. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I, I do think it's something we need to pursue and to kind of decide and I mean, if you're looking, if we look at what Montgomery County's doing, and I think they were doing like 200 uh, autopsies a year. Uh, they they first moved into a, refitted a building and turned it into a medical examiner's office. They were doing like 200 a year. I think right now they're doing about a thousand, and so uh, they've they've had to expand, and they're they're working on building a a medical examiner's office currently. I don't know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised that if, if we built one, we may have that kind of 